Well, the title of my book is The Prosecution of George W. Bush for Murder. There's no ambiguity to that title. My motivation for writing this book is, is, is quite simple, to bring about justice. George Bush, in my opinion, has gotten away with murder, thousands of murders, and no one is doing anything about it. And we, America, the American people, can't let him do this. I think the majority of American people probably are going to find it difficult to accept that the President of the United States, the most powerful man on earth, would engage in conduct that smacks of such great criminality. I mean, you just don't expect something like this of an American president. However, I'm very confident that once they read the book, they're going to be overwhelmed by the evidence against Bush and will be convinced that he's guilty of murder and should be prosecuted. In the book, I lay out the legal architecture for the case against Bush, all of the evidence of guilt against Bush, and the jurisdiction to prosecute him. I mean, I even set forth proposed cross-examination questions of him if he takes the witness stand at his trial. There is conclusive evidence that in George Bush's first speech to the nation, that Saddam Hussein was a great danger to this nation, either by his attacking us with his so-called weapons of mass destruction, or giving these weapons to some terrorist group to attack us. And he said the attack could happen, quote, on any given day, unquote, meaning the threat was imminent. The only big problem for George Bush, and if he were prosecuted, there's no way he could get around this, is that on October the 1st, 2002, six days earlier, the CIA sent George Bush its 2002 National Intelligence Estimate, a classified top secret report representing the consensus opinion of 16 federal intelligence agencies. Page 8 clearly and unequivocally says that Saddam Hussein was not an imminent threat to the security of this country. In fact, the report says that Hussein would only use whatever weapons of mass destruction he had against us if he feared that America was about to attack him. So we know then he was telling millions upon millions of unsuspecting Americans the exact opposite of what his own CIA was telling him. If we had nothing further to go on, and there's so much more evidence against Bush, just from this alone, we know that George Bush took this nation to war on a lie. Who's going to pay for all of this? Someone has to pay. And the person that has to pay, obviously, is the one who's directly responsible for all of the death, horror, and suffering. And that person is George Bush. I've set forth in my book the jurisdictional basis for the attorney general in each of the 50 states, plus the hundreds upon hundreds of district attorneys in counties within the state to prosecute George Bush for the murder of any soldier or soldiers from their state or county who were killed in Iraq fighting George Bush's war. I don't think it's too unreasonable to believe that at least one prosecutor out there in America, maybe many more, will be courageous enough to say, this is the United States of America. And in America, no one is above the law. George Bush has gotten away with murder. No one is doing anything about it. And maybe this book will change that.